Hey, thanks for watching this video. There's more at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and there is the pie guy. All right, this is fourth grade, module seven, lesson 14. And in this lesson, we're gonna be continuing to do what we've been doing the past few lessons, which is converting mixed number measurements into uh, smaller units or a single unit. So let's get started. So it says Molly baked a pie for an hour and 45 minutes. So that seems important, so let's underline that. And then she baked a banana bread for 35 minutes less than the pie. So that seems important. And then how many minutes did it take to buy, bake the pie and the bread? So we're gonna assume that the pie and the bread are not baking at the same time, uh, that they are, I guess, separate. So you've got pie, you've got bread, and we're gonna start by drawing the same length unit uh, bar for each of them, tape diagram. But then, oh, and then we can go in and say, well, that the pie is an hour, 45 minutes. All right. But then here's the thing. It says, then she baked the banana bread for 35 minutes less than the pie. So really, this bread uh, tape diagram needs to be shorter by 35 minutes. So we're going to cross this off and say it's 35 minutes. So we need to figure out what is the length of that bar diagram, that tape diagram for the bread. And then the question is, how many did it take to bake the pie? Uh, how much time did it take to bake the pie and the bread? So what's our strategy? Our strategy is going to be start with the pie, subtract 35 minutes. Take these two numbers and subtract. That's going to give us the bread. And then once we have the bread, we're going to take the pie and the bread and we're going to add them together and that'll give us our answer. So continuing, I'm just giving you strategies, not actually going to solve the problems. So here it says uh, a slide on the playground is 12 and a half feet long. It is three feet. So that seems important. So let's underline that 12 feet long. It is three feet, seven inches longer than the small slide. How long is that small slide? How long is the small slide? So you've got the long big slide and the small slide. Okay, so let's put B and S, big slide and the small slide. And so we're gonna start by giving them both the exact same tape diagram. We can label the big slide as 12 and a half feet long. And we know that the small slide is three feet seven inches, oh, it is three feet, no, so the, the, the big slide is three feet seven inches longer than the small slide. So we know that for the small slide that we need to chop off three feet seven inches. And so the question is, how long is that small slide? So what we need to do is we need to take 12 and a half feet and subtract three feet seven inches. Well, we don't have any inches up here in the big one because it says 12 feet, 12 and a half feet. So we need to know that that converts to 12 feet six inches. And now we can subtract 12 feet six inches minus three feet seven inches and that will give us our answer which is the the length of the small slide so a fish tank holds eight gallons two quarts of water that seems pretty important Jeffrey poured uh, one and three quarters gallons into the empty tank. How much more water 
does he need to pour into the tank to fill it? So let's see, you've got a tank, and that tank could hold eight gallons and two quarts. Now Jeffrey poured one and three quarters gallons into this empty tank, so I'm gonna just label it arbitrarily right here and call that one and three quarters gallons. So then the question is, how much more does he still need? So right here, there's our question mark, right here. What is our question? How much is that? So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to subtract these two numbers. But we need to convert the gallons, uh, this one, into gallons and quarts. So we remember 16 ounces, no, no, four, four quarts in a gallon. So one and three quarters gallons is really the same thing as saying one gallon and three quarts. It's a coincidence in this case that the three and the three, it's, it happens to be because there's four quarts in a gallon. So heads up on that. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna take the eight gallons, two quarts, we're gonna subtract one gallon, three quarts, and that will give us our answer to the question mark. All right, so we have a candy shop. It puts 10 ounces of gummy bears in each box. That seems like it might be important. Oops, uh, there we go. Might be important. And then it says, how many boxes do they need to fill if there are, holy moly, 21 and a quarter pounds of gummy bears. So basically, we've got this big long tape diagram that represents 21 and a quarter pounds. And we need to figure out how many little 10 ounces so here's 10 ounces, here's 10 ounces, here's 10 ounces, and I should be putting OZ, OZ, OZ. How many 10 ounces do we need until we've finally made 21 and a quarter pounds? Oh my goodness. So really what we need to do is, first thing we need to do is convert pounds into ounces. So we've got 21 pounds and a quarter of a pound. So 21 pounds is easy. 21 pounds times 16 ounces in each pound. So I don't know what that is. 21 times 16. 6, 12, 0, 1, 2, so 336. So that's equal to 336 ounces. Now that quarter of a pound, so the quarter of a pound, well, if one pound is 16 ounces, if you chop that up into four equal pieces, a quarter of a pound, oops, P-O-U-N-D, is equal to four ounces. So we add those together, you get 440 ounces. So this whole thing is equal to 440. 40 ounces. Now we're wondering how many 10 ounce um, boxes can we do, oops, in 440 ounces. How many 10 ounce boxes can we do? The answer is 44. And because we know that we're going to do 440 divided by 10, that gives us 44 boxes that we can do. Now, oh geez, I kind of, I got excited about doing this math problem. I was supposed to just map out the solution strategy and I actually ended up doing it for you. You're welcome. <laughs> and the last slide. Mom, good old mom, can make 10 brownies from a 12 ounce package. That's important to know. So then it says, how many ounces of brownie mix would be needed to make 50 
brownies. So let's see, how many ounces? So 10 ounces, 10 brownies, 10 brownies, and I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to write down 10 brownies, and that is 12 ounces. All right, so let's zoom out. There we go. So if we're going to make 50 brownies, so that means we're going to do another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. So there's 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10. So there's our 50 brownies, which means how many, how much mix are we going to need? We're going to need another 12 another 12, another 12, and another 12. So all together, we're going to need one, two, three, four, five copies of 12. So five times 12 equals 60 ounces of brownie mix is going to be needed. And the extension is the brownie mix is also sold in one and a half pound bags. How many bags would be needed to make a hundred 20 brownies. Oh my goodness. So, well, 120 brownies. If, if it, 10 brownies, 10 brownies requires 12 ounces. But now we want 120 brownies. Well, that's basically 12 copies of 10, which means we're going to need 12 copies of 12 for the ounces. So that gives us 144 ounces. So we're going to need 144 ounces. Well, what's a one and a half pound bag? Well, one and a half pound bag, one bag, one pound, I mean is 16 ounces so a half a pound is going to be 8 ounces so that's 24 ounces and if we want to know how many 24 ounces are in 144 so that means we're going to do 144 divided by 24. Hmm. Let's try 6. Yep. 12 times 6. I mean, 24 times 6 gives us 144. Exactly. So we have no remainder. So we're going to need 6 bags in order to make. 144 ounces, which will allow uh, 144 ounces of mix, which would allow us to make 120 brownies. And that wraps up a doozy. Fourth grade, module seven, lesson 14, multi-step word problems involving converting measurements.